So now let's go on and talk a little bit about how to actually consume uh, these types of uh, promises with await and sync. So let's let's go on and actually create up a new example here. And I'm going to create up a API fetching example. Okay. And uh, this one will be again, index.html here. And we will, let's do this all in one. Okay, so HTML, we can do body. And let's just do our script right inside. So we can have it. So let's do const fetch async. Okay. Uh, function. And we'll do const result here is await fetch and let's let's maybe think about what we actually want to fetch. Let me go and look at a couple websites really quickly and I'll be right back. So I'm gonna go on and grab up a a a we're gonna go back over to course API and we're gonna grab the JavaScript store products example for this uh, to to fetch some data okay and here let's go on and do const data is equal to await our result dot json and then we want to console log this data okay so then now we can later on we can actually use this function here called fetch. Oops, I don't know why it did that here. This is actually, I want to call this fetch API. API is equal to our async there. That makes things a little bit better. Sorry about that, guys. So again, we actually have the a function called fetch here. We don't want to override it. So this is this is what we're wanting here. And we're going to now we can have it go on in fetch our API. And we can also now log this saying, yeah, I'm first, okay? And maybe again, let's give this body an H1 tag here and say, fetching data with API, okay? And we'll go on over to our Let's go to, did I put it in the inventory one again? Oh, and I put this inside here. Let's take this out. You don't belong in there. All right. And so our API fetching example, and I'm going to open this up with Chrome. Okay. And I'll bring this on over here so we can see it. If I right click on it and I inspect and go to console. Now everything seems to be uh, ran, running, right? And so you see, yeah, I'm first, and then we have our array of, uh, of data, okay? So if we look here, notice we ran that API fetch first, and then we had this piece of code after it. Well, if we didn't have this async and this await, we would be having trouble here. It would actually have to run this code to grab the data and then it would print out this bit of code, okay? So now we can go on and continue on with our file while it is collecting up data. We can do things in the background. So let's go over this just one more time just to kind of, well, actually, you know what? Let's, let's go back over here and let's refresh it just so that you can see. Yeah, I'm first. And then there's a little blink of a second and then it pops out, okay? So in, the, in this code, Okay, first we're going to call this API fetch. And again, it has this asynchronous behavior. Okay, so we see the async behavior in the function. And then it's going to log out, yeah, I'm first. 
So according to our asynchronous JavaScript, our fetch API should be running in the background and not blocking the execution of this code. So as a result, yeah, I'm first runs. Now, if you want to utilize asynchronous tasks in your functions, you're going to have to make that function asynchronous using the async, right here, this async keyword, okay, before the function. Whenever promises are returned, we have to use await right here, okay, before it consumes the promise. Now you might be thinking, uh, how should I handle errors? Well, for that, we can actually use try and catch, and we're going to do that uh, right now. Okay, so we use error handling with try and catch. So let's, let's, so how do we handle errors? So we handle errors with try and catch. Now we can use try and catch in vanilla JavaScript as well, but it also helps us handling errors in asynchronous JavaScript with async and await. So we utilize try and catch as it's a very easy way and it's very similar to just using the catch method in the then using the catch chaining method. Now here we're going to be trying code in a try block and if it runs successfully then there's going to be no problem. But if the code in the try block has an error then we can catch it with the catch block. So we can use and check for errors in a try block and throw our custom error, uh, which will be caught in the catch block. Once we catch the error in the catch block, then we can do whatever we want when we encounter the error. So let's actually see some code in how to, to do this. So let's go on and create up a new file. Uh, let me save this as what? Uh, error handling async and we'll do index.html and let's just do html5 and let's go on and put up a script src called script.js uh, and let's give it a h1 tag of error handling with async. And maybe we'll put this down in the body just for consistency with the other videos. All right, so let's also create up a new uh, script file. And let's go on and give this a, a, a try. So this is gonna be very similar to our fetch API. So we do const fetch a API, and this is going to be an async. So that's our keyword in here, a function, and we want to try. We're going to have a try catch statement, and we'll have an error. So first off in the try, okay, we want const for our response, await, and we are going to fetch from the API and the API that I want to use today. Let's see. Uh, let me go to course.api and let me grab, let's grab our tours data again, just because it's kind of nice. And we'll grab up our tours data. And then let's go on and put in the rest here. So we want some if statement here and if the response is okay then it's going to is not okay because again we have the uh, exclamation point there so we have a new error here and this can usually just be some custom error but for for now for fun we'll say ah the bees okay and then after this, we want to go on and have our constant data. It's equal to await. So again, we're awaiting that response from the API. And then let's also go on and console log out the data. Now we have the error, 
So we want to potentially go on and also log out the error as well. So let's go back down here and we can fetch our API and then we can console log in here. But first, the news, okay? And so we should be able to go over to our inventory handling. We should be able to go into our example and we should be able to open up with Google Chrome. And if I and use the inspection tool, go to console. Again, notice here, if I, if I refresh this, it says, but first the news. And notice here we have our data because again, our, our API doesn't have any error in there. Now, if this were to have some negative consequences, so it was, it did not work for some reason. Okay. So let's make, let's go on and maybe just take out instead of the dot com, let's take out maybe part of the tours here. So then that maybe this page here is going to be incorrect. So we can go in and do that and notice 404 not found. Oh, our error, ah, the bees at fetch API. Okay, so now we actually get this working. If we go back and we put everything back in and we run this now, notice everything works fine. We go back through, we take out maybe another chunk of it and let's go back over and let's refresh. Again, now everything is working correctly. So this is how uh, we want to kind of wrap up with our asynchronous code here, utilizing a try and a catch statement. And here we want to catch a block of code in an error, and we want to throw up some new error whenever we catch it. And this way, this can all go to the console lock. So if you guys like more of this and you want more, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.